Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Spider-Man Homecoming to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in this movie really are. Tons of exotic materials scattered throughout the tri-state area. Hey Chief, we still have another load from yesterday. We're supposed to turn this in, right? I ain't hauling it. It's too bad. We could have made some pretty cool stuff from all that alien junk. There's currently no technology that I know of anyway that came from outer space from like aliens or anything like that. But space exploration itself has had a tremendous impact on all the technology we have here on Earth. First one that comes to mind are satellites. I mean just without those we don't have like cable, we don't have a GPS, which means you don't have like Uber, food delivery services, like Google Maps. You don't even have dating apps without GPS. When the first astronauts went into space, they went there using brand new technology that had never been like even used on Earth before. Like when you go into space, there are no outlets. So you have to adapt your technology accordingly, otherwise you can't use anything that has electronic power to it. All the power tools on Earth used to have a very long extension cord if you had to use any of them for any reason. Through space exploration, if you wanted to use a drill, you had to make it wireless and had a battery pack attached to it. From that expedition onwards, every power tool on Earth is pretty much wireless. Like, if you don't have a wireless one, you really just don't even want to use it. Just from that one exploration, it changed power tools on Earth forever. And every time we go into space, we discover something further and newer that we can bring back to Earth and improve all of our technology here. So, how do we calculate linear acceleration between points A and B? Peter! Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... Uh, mass cancels out, so it's just gravity times sine. Right? That was very subtle, but he's absolutely correct. The mass at the end of the pendulum has nothing to do with, like, this acceleration. All you really care about is the angle at which, like, you let go of it and it starts to swing back and forth. Even the equation that Peter said here is absolutely correct. The equation is g sine theta to find the acceleration of the pendulum, because remember, mass doesn't matter. And what you want to do is find the sine of theta is the angle at which you let go of the pendulum. So if it's like, if this is like your wall and you have your pendulum, if you let go of it like right here and start swinging back and forth, it'll be a different acceleration than if you like let go of it right there. The units for acceleration or the SI units for acceleration are meters per second squared and there's no mass involved. So I mean, unfortunately for Flash, like he didn't actually check his units before giving his answer. I mean, that's, that's something like when I was in college, that was the most easy way to see if you got an answer correct or wrong like if you really don't know what you're doing if you're trying to find acceleration your final answer has to be something that's distance over time squared like there shouldn't be any other units except for distance over time squared i also like how in this scene they use a pendulum as an example because that's how spider-man swings through manhattan like he's shooting all the spider silk and then he is the mass at the end, at the end of the pendulum just swinging all the way through manhattan also, this is really, really subtle, but I think it's super cool. If you look at like the top of like where it has all the teachers like Einstein and like Tesla, on the far right, it actually has Mark Ruffalo or um, Bruce Banner. That's, it has like Bruce Banner as one of the really like dope scientists. I think that's awesome. Oh. Oh, gotcha. All right, Happy. Enjoy tracking this lamp. How did he do that? I mean, it's so like the first thing that things out to me is that I, I've never seen a circuit like that before. Or I mean, just like how, yeah, basically how does Peter know that that one part that he removed is a GPS or is a tracker? Like, I, I don't know how he's able to just look at that one piece and go, oh, it must be that one. If you look at a computer motherboard that's like fully functional with all the components, you can easily identify like the RAM, graphics card, processor, but that's because they're all labeled and because you know what they look like separately. But right here in the Spider-Man suit, like I don't know how everything is routed, but it looks like every component is the exact same. So like I, I, I don't understand like how he was able to even locate like this tracker amongst all of this like other circuitry. From removing that GPS tracker that doesn't actually affect the rest of the suit if it was designed correctly because if you would make it such that that was in a parallel circuit, you can remove that one component and the circuit would still function as normal, but if it was in a series circuit, you take out one thing and then just it all goes to hell. 
So we're going to assume that Tony Stark knows what he's doing and he made that GPS in a parallel. Activating reconnaissance drum. Whoa. Has that been there this whole time? That's awesome. Locating optimal entry point. Proceed to southwest window. Yeah, like, that that drone is really, really cool, and I can tell you it's 100% absolutely legitimate. Like, we can make drones that small, in fact, probably even smaller than that by now, and they'll be fully functional with a camera. I don't, I really don't know why this thing has two lenses on it. I mean, for a camera, you'll need one lens, but I guess it looks more, like, bug-like that way. I don't know if you can make a drone in the shape of a bug like that, but in terms of, like, just size, you can certainly make one that size. Vulture is really cool. I mean, I like the whole look of his suit and like how fluid he is while he's going through the air. I unfortunately can't. Well, so th th this is a tough part, right? Like we know that his suit is like, or the whole like exo suit, it's built from recycled alien technology and they blended that in with like our current like human technology. So it's very difficult for me to say like what part of it is real and what part of it is alien because I don't know. We've been trying to make jetpacks like that for like I don't know how long, like a couple hundred years or something. And it, they're just, one of the fundamental problems with them is you can't get enough lift from the motors or from the turbines to actually get a human body off the ground. So the actual wings of this vulture do pretty much nothing. I mean all the lift is achieved through the turbines he has attached to each of the wings but I mean, like, he did use them to cut Spider-Man's web, so I guess they have some sort of purpose in combat. But the biggest reason I could say that this is not possible is because it doesn't have a suitable power source, and I don't know if it has a cooling system, because he's flying all the time. The good news is, he definitely has, like, something I've commented on multiple times for multiple superheroes and their suits. He actually has a mask, where he can get oxygen, so while he's changing elevations, he doesn't pass out. So, uh, I don't know, like, who the producer is for this movie, but they definitely caught that and like that part of the suit is very real you need that all right from the jump i'm gonna let you guys know i do not know what spider-man's webs are made of i can't think of any material that we know of that can even come close to having the properties that his webs do what we know about them is they solidify very quickly they have an extremely high tensile strength they dissolve within like two hours of him using them which is why they're not like a bunch of webs all over manhattan they're very easy to make because he built them in a high school chemistry lab. I don't know of any material that actually has all these properties, but one of the questions I would like answered is, like, how does he not get stuck to his own webs? Like, is there something, like, in the suit or something that the spider bit him with or something? Because, like, in the previous Spider-Man movies, he had organic webs that just came out of his veins. But, like, in this movie, he has, like, like uh, I don't know what you call them, like, web cartridges, I think. So... I, I don't get, like, how his suit is not, like, always, like, stuck to one end of the web. Like, I don't know how, like, he cuts him off or something. This version of the Spider-Man suit is my favorite by far from any of the previous movies I've seen before. The reason I like this suit so much is because it uses technology to actually solve problems that Peter Parker had when he had his older suit. Like, in the previous movies, he just went from, like, not knowing anything to knowing everything. Whereas over here, you can see him progressing and actually learning how to use the suit, like, uh, what went wrong, what goes right. And I, there's so many things that he actually has to apply himself for. Rather than in the previous movies, he was pretty much just wearing spandex. One of the key features about the suit are the eyes. Peter Parker specifically said that he, like, he ditched the old hoodie <laughs> because, like, he was just wearing goggles and, like, a cloth, basically. And the reason he was doing it was because there was too much, like, stimulation coming from the outside and he couldn't focus on it. So he had to dull his senses because they were so sensitive to actually, like, you know, interact with the world around him. And with this suit Tony Stark made, these eyes in the Spider-Man, like, suit can actually, like, condense themselves and, like, expand whenever he needs to. So there's no time where he's overwhelmed overwhelmed by his spider senses i mean he can be overwhelmed like in an environment he's in but just from his own internal body he's fine the other really cool part that we can see is peter can actually use that eyes of the suit to zoom in and this is the first time we've seen that in any of the like spider-man iterations but this one in particular is really cool because not only can he zoom in but the eyes of the suit can actually like map out an environment of who's around him and it'll like give you IDs of everybody and even in, in this scene right here we can see that he can identify a phone call 
which I mean, the, like the, the zooming in part of this is pretty easy. I mean, this is very, very like you can do it right now. Like that, that's not difficult at all. But the difficult part of this is the listening in on someone's conversation for like right now in particular because like this person is on the phone and he's a good distance from Peter. There's also other people on the boat probably on their phones as well and having their own conversations. So to zoom in like that and just listen on to that one person is really, really tough. But to counteract that, he has a drone in the suit, which can fly around to any part of the boat, which no one can detect that. And if the drone is close enough to the glass, and the person, as we can see, is like sitting kind of closer to that one side, I see no problem why Peter can't listen in on exactly what's going on in that phone conversation. The technology has already existed for over 30 years to read vibrations off of glass and actually translate that into speech. So if someone's like, let's say someone's in a restaurant and they're sitting close to the window of a restaurant. There have been cases in New York where the police have busted like mafia guys when they're, they're using like a laser to read the vibrations off a piece of glass so they can listen in on what's going on inside of the restaurant. This is only effective, however, if the person you're trying to like, the person whose conversation you're trying to listen in on is sitting as close to the window as possible. This might sound really silly, but I wonder if he has to actually charge the suit because it's it's using a lot of electrical power. I mean, like the zooming in, zooming out is easy, but at any given time, wherever he's looking, he can like map that whole, like he's literally looking at a ship right now and there's a computer inside the suit. Like there's a whole AI, Karen, right? And she's telling him all this information. Like I, I'm just wondering if this is on 24 7 or every time he wears the suit like is there a charging port for it so like it sounds stupid right but like how is this whole thing being powered like you have to actually provide it with some sort of fuel my guess is that the same way that ned was able to like plug in that part of the suit and like when he removed the training wheels protocol i think that's the same place that peter would charge his spider-man suit but i mean this is like at this point we're going really deep <laughs> into speculative material here Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you found some value in it or you just like Spider-Man, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see any other movies or TV shows for me to commentate over, go ahead, put them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.